Pennsylvania. <laughs> to Congressman Keller, to Rob Bresnahan and all the hardworking men and women of Kuharchik Construction, the neighbors and friends from across Pennsylvania. It is great to be back in the Keystone State with Workers for Trump. And I'm so grateful you all came out on a beautiful day, the first day of September, as we start the road to victory on November 3rd. And it really is great to be here with so many friends who supported this president and our administration from day one. Would you join me in thanking someone who has been a fighter for this administration? He has stood strong for an agenda that made America great again in our first three years and seen this state and nation through a trying time. Congressman Fred Keller, thank you for your great leadership in the House of Representatives and for America. It's also great to be here with two future members of Congress who I know are going to stand with this president in our agenda for four more years. Join me in thanking Lisa Scheller and Jim Bognet. Pennsylvania needs to send them to Washington, D.C. It really is great to be with all of you. You can take a seat if you got one. Because I'm here for one reason and one reason only. And that is that Pennsylvania and America need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. It's on, Pennsylvania. It's on. And I'm so excited to be back, back with all of you. We had a busy week last week. Uh, how about that Republican National Convention? Did you check some of that out? I mean, come Thursday night, President Trump laid out an inspiring vision. Inspiring vision for our second term, a vision of more jobs, better wages, more support for our heroes. And that night, the president said that voters have never faced a clearer choice. This election, as he said, will decide whether we allow a socialist agenda to demolish our cherished destiny or whether we save the American dream. Standing here in Pennsylvania, I know we're going to vote for America. We're going to vote for four more years for President Donald Trump in the White House. You know, I know we're not too far from our opponent's uh, boyhood home. But it's Trump country now. <laughs> you know, I'm here because I stand with President Donald Trump. When this president stands up for faith and family and the American flag, I stand with President Donald Trump. When this president stands up to the radical left and their socialist agenda, I stand with President Donald Trump. And when this president stands up for American workers and jobs, 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 we stand with President Donald Trump. You know, four years ago, a movement was born. And judging from this crowd and everybody I saw on the way here, it looks like that movement's doing just fine in Pennsylvania. You know, it was a movement of everyday Americans from every walk of life. Here in Pennsylvania, you believe we could be strong again. You believe we could be prosperous again. You said yes to President Donald Trump in 2016, and I know that Pennsylvania is going to say yes to four more years of President Donald Trump in 2020.
And I mean, look how far we've come. Four years ago, we inherited a military hollowed out by devastating budget cuts, an economy struggling to break out of the slowest recovery since the Great Depression. Terrorism was on the rise around the world, and we witnessed a steady assault on our most cherished values, the freedom of religion and the right to life. And in four short years, we rebuilt our military. We restored the arsenal of democracy, and we are once again given our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Space Force the resources and support they need to defend this nation. We revived our economy. We cut taxes across the board, rolled back federal red tape, unleashed American energy, fought for free and fair trade. We stood for all of our God-given liberties like the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, and the unalienable right to life. And this president stood for the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms, and we always will. We appointed conservatives, more than 200 conservatives at every level including two great Supreme Court justices. And every single day, this president and this administration have stood with the men and women of law enforcement all across America. You know, today, the president's visiting Wisconsin to show support for the people of Kenosha, who've been through a lot in the last week. He went there to show support for law enforcement for the National Guard. And President Donald Trump is in Kenosha today to make it clear that we stand for law and order in every city and every town for every American. You know, I saw Joe Biden was in Pennsylvania yesterday. Did you see it? After months of staying silent on riots and looting and violence in the streets of our cities, Joe Biden finally came out of his basement. And he actually said, we have to stand against violence in every form it takes. And right after that, he criticized law enforcement. And he never mentioned any of the anarchists or left-wing mobs that have been sowing violence in the streets of our major cities. And Joe Biden said yesterday he, uh, he doesn't think he looks like a, quote, radical socialist with a soft spot for rioters. But men and women of Pennsylvania, you should know. Yesterday, Joe Biden never condemned Antifa. He never called on Democrat mayors to get their cities under control. He never called out his campaign staff or his running mate for raising money to bail out violent criminals. And Joe Biden never even offered a plan to end the violence. For months, all he's talked about is peaceful protesters as the American people have watched businesses and communities in our major cities burn. It's been heartbreaking to watch. I mean, the truth is, Joe Biden would double down on the policies that have led to violence in America's cities. And I think you all know, you won't be safe in Joe Biden's America. Now, President Trump and I will always support the right of Americans to peaceful protest. But rioting and looting is not peaceful protest. Burning businesses is not free speech. And those who do so will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Too many heroes have died defending our freedom to see Americans strike each other down in our streets. We will have law and order on the streets of this country for every American of every race and creed and color. So help us God.
And I think the people of Pennsylvania know, despite what the many leaders in the Democratic Party have to say, many voices in the media and those on the radical left, we don't have to choose between supporting law enforcement and standing with our African-American neighbors to improve the quality of their lives, their education, their jobs, and safety. From the first day of this administration, we've done both. And we will keep supporting law enforcement and keep supporting our African-American and minority communities across this land for four more years. Now, Joe Biden says America is systemically racist and that law enforcement has an implicit bias against minorities. And when asked whether he'd support cutting funding to law enforcement, Joe Biden replied, yes, absolutely. But under President Donald Trump, I'll make you a promise. We will always stand with those who serve on the thin blue line of law enforcement. We're not going to defund the police, not now, not ever. So under President Trump's leadership, we've stood for a stronger and safer America. We've stood up for all of our liberties. We've revived our economy. And in those first three years, businesses large and small created more than 7 million good-paying jobs, including 500,000 manufacturing jobs. You know, Pennsylvania and Indiana have a lot in common. I, I always used to say back when I was governor of the Hoosier State that we did two things well. We make things and we grow things. Right? But the last administration lost 200,000 manufacturing jobs. The last president, with his vice president, Joe Biden, actually said in the summer of 2016 that he was asked how, about, about manufacturing jobs. He says, I don't know what you're going to do to bring them back. He said, he said, what magic wand do you have? Well, the people of Pennsylvania knew we didn't need a magic wand. We just needed President Donald Trump in the White House. 500,000 manufacturing jobs created in the first three years. You know, in three short years, with your support, we created the greatest economy in the world. We made America great again. And then, the coronavirus struck from China. But before the first case of coronavirus spread person to person within the United States, our president took the unprecedented action of suspending all travel from China. And I promise you, that action saved untold American lives, and it bought us invaluable time to stand up the greatest national mobilization since World War II. At the President's direction, we marshaled the full resources of the federal government and the American economy. We partnered with private industry to reinvent testing. We produced billions of supplies distributed to our great doctors and nurses and hospital workers around the country. And as we speak, we're developing a growing number of treatments that are saving lives across America. And even though Joe Biden said that, quote, no miracle is coming, I got news for you. We are on track to have the world's first safe and effective coronavirus vaccine by the end of the year. America's the land of miracles. Now, that said, I want to be clear. Our hearts go out to all the families that have lost loved ones during the course of this pandemic including the more than 7,000 families here in the Keystone State. Know that you've always been in our hearts, and you'll remain in our prayers. But thanks to the courage and compassion of the American people, the extraordinary work of our health care workers, we're slowing the spread. We're protecting the vulnerable. We're saving lives. And we're opening up America again. And in the days ahead, I promise you, 
We're going to continue to put the health of America first. As we work to bring this economy all the way back, we all have a role to play, but we all have a choice to make. Because of the strong foundation that President Trump and the congressmen and our allies in Washington, D.C. helped us to pour, it's amazing to think. We've already seen 9 million Americans go back to work in the last three months alone, including more than 500,000 jobs right here in Pennsylvania. And just this morning, we saw that manufacturing, the backbone of the American economy, actually expanded at the highest rate since November of 2018. Men and women of Pennsylvania, because of the strong foundation on which we are standing, the great American comeback is happening. But you need to ask yourself and ask your neighbors, come November 3rd, as our economy is beginning to stand back up, as we're putting millions of Americans back to work, you need to ask yourself, who do you trust to rebuild this economy? A career politician who presided over the slowest recovery since the Great Depression? Or a proven leader who created the greatest economy in the world? The choice is clear to bring America all the way back. We need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. So we've been going through a time of testing, and as I said just the other night, we're soon coming to a time for choosing. And on safety and security, jobs and values, the choice could not be more clear. I mean, think about it. In the middle of a global pandemic, Joe Biden wants to raise taxes by $4 trillion. President Trump, well, we cut taxes across the board for working families, businesses large and small, and we're going to cut taxes again in the next four years. Joe Biden wants to bury our economy under an avalanche of red tape, like his own version of the Green New Deal. President Trump, he actually signed more laws cutting federal red tape than any president in American history, and we're going to keep chopping for four more years. Joe Biden, he wants to go back to economic surrender with China. He actually said he would repeal all the tariffs that the president put into place that have been leveling the playing field for American workers. President Trump, he stood up to China. He put American jobs and American workers first, and we're going to stand strong until we level the playing field once and for all. Also on trade, Joe Biden voted for NAFTA. We all know what that did to this economy. But thanks to President Donald Trump, NAFTA is yesterday, and the USMCA is here to stay. It's a win for American jobs. You know, the experts tell us the USMCA could create up to 600,000 new jobs, including 50,000 manufacturing jobs. It's incredible. And where President Donald Trump ended the war on coal, unleashed American energy, and we're now a net exporter of energy for the first time in 70 years. <laughs> Joe Biden and the radical left want to crush American energy, crush American energy jobs, and raise the cost of electricity for every household and business in Pennsylvania. But yesterday, Joe Biden actually went to Pittsburgh and after months of campaigning on a plan to abolish fossil fuels, he said, I am not banning fracking. In fact, he said it twice. And then he said President Trump was lying about his record. So let me, uh, let me set the record straight. 
When Joe Biden was asked last July, and I quote, would there be any place for fossil fuels, including coal and fracking, in a Biden administration, Joe Biden said, quote, no, we would work it out. Here in Pennsylvania, where fracking, ending fracking would literally cost a half a million jobs by some estimates. You deserve to know. That when Joe Biden was asked whether he'd be willing to, quote, sacrifice thousands or hundreds of thousands of blue-collar jobs for the sake of a radical environmental agenda, Joe Biden said, quote, the answer's yes. And this time last year, he told a supporter, and I quote, I guarantee, I guarantee we're going to end fossil fuels. Joe, that includes fracking. I mean, what Joe doesn't know is that America's future depends on energy independence. So let me tell all the great workers gathered here, workers for Trump, whatever you may hear over every day that remains between now and Election Day, Joe Biden and the radical left are going to try to ban fracking and abolish fossil fuels, but we're not going to let it happen. I guarantee, I guarantee, with four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House, we'll have more fracking, more American energy, and energy independence for generations to come. So it's been about prosperity and security. It's also about recognizing that we have a president that knows that if you don't have a border, you don't have a nation. Joe Biden is for open borders, sanctuary cities, free lawyers and health care for illegal immigrants. President Donald Trump has stood by the men and women of Customs and Border Protection. We've made historic investments in border security, and we've already built more than 300 miles of that border wall on the southern border of the United States. And with four more years, we're going to build it all. <laughs> and finally, beyond security and safety and prosperity, it's also about values in this election. You know, for years, Joe Biden took the position that while he supported abortion rights, he didn't support using taxpayer funds to pay for abortion. But now, Joe Biden supports using taxpayer dollars to pay for abortion all the way up to the moment of birth. And I couldn't be more proud to be vice president to a president who stands without apology for the sanctity of human life. <laughs> president Donald Trump is the most pro-life president in American history. And it's not just been about life, it's been about liberty. And this president has stood strong for the freedom of religion of every American, of every faith, and we always will. President Donald Trump, in our first year, ended the assault on the Little Sisters of the Poor, and the Supreme Court of the United States made it permanent. <laughs> Joe Biden, he actually said that he would work to reimpose the Obamacare mandates on those wonderful nuns but we're not going to let it happen. You know, the choice in this election has never been clear. The stakes have never been higher. When you look at that agenda, it's clear. Joe Biden would, would be nothing more than a Trojan horse for an agenda of the radical left. A couple of weeks back, Joe Biden said that democracy was on the ballot. But I think you all know that our economy is on the ballot. Law and order are on the ballot. 
But there are also things much more fundamental and foundational to our country that are on the ballot as well. I think in this election, it's not so much whether America will be more conservative or more liberal, whether we'll be more Republican or more Democrat, more red or blue. I think the choice in this election is whether America remains America. Whether we're going to chart a course grounded in our highest ideals of freedom and free markets, the unalienable right to life and liberty, or whether we're going to change course as a nation and fundamentally transform our country and our economy into something entirely different. President Donald Trump has set our nation on a path of freedom an opportunity. Joe Biden would set America on a path of socialism and decline. Men and women, I came to Pennsylvania today because we stand at a crossroads. And Joe Biden and the Democratic Party have been overtaken by the radical left. And many of you may have described and identified yourself as Democrats in the past. You may still today, but you all deserve to know this is not your father's or your mother's Democratic Party. I mean, the truth is, the Democratic Party today is about higher taxes, socialized medicine, open borders, abortion on demand, and cutting funding to law enforcement. It would take our nation on a path of socialism and decline. And so I say to all my fellow Republicans, all our independents, and every great Democrat gathered here, we need to decide right here and right now that Joe Biden is never going to be President of the United States. We're going to reelect President Donald Trump for four more years. Because for all we've done in those first three years, for all we've done through the trying days of 2020, that's just what President Donald Trump calls a good start. <laughs> We're going to keep America going, keep America growing. And with four more years, I promise you, four more years means more jobs. Four more years means more judges. Four more years means more support for our troops. And it's going to take at least four more years to drain that swamp. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's on. And it's time. I mean, President Donald Trump, I think you all figured out a while ago, President Donald Trump is a real deal. It's a man who says what he means and means what he says. He never quits. He never backs down. And I can tell you firsthand, He's never stopped fighting to keep the promises that he made to the people of Pennsylvania. Now it's our turn to fight for him. So I need you to bring it. Bring all your enthusiasm. Talk to your neighbors and friends in every day between now and Election Day. And when you get out there, have faith. Have faith that even in these divided times, that every time the American people have been presented a choice between a, a future of more freedom or a future of less freedom. The American people choose freedom every time. So have faith in your neighbors and friends. Speak to them at work, at worship. Tell them I was over, I was over at the construction company. I ran into Mike. I said he talked for like a half hour just like giving a summary of everything we got done under this president, everything we've been able to do for the American people. So go talk to your neighbors and friends and be confident. And, uh, and I'd also encourage you to have that other kind of faith. You know, it, it seems as you turn on the television these days, it seems like 
There's more that divides this country than any time in my lifetime. But I'll always believe, and I believe it more, having traveled across this country as your vice president, that there will always be more that unites the American people than could ever divide us. And chief among those things is faith. This is a nation of faith. And so I want to say to you, if you're inclined to bow the head and bend the knee from time to time, I encourage you to do that too. And on this one, I'm not, I'm not asking for uh, support for a candidate or a cause or a party. I'm, I'm just thinking about our country. And I'm thinking about that ancient promise that if his people who are called by his name will humble themselves and pray, he'll do like he's always done through the long and storied history of this country. He'll hear from heaven and he'll heal this land, this one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So pray for America. Pray for all the American people. It'll make a difference. So I thank you for coming out today. I leave here today with renewed confidence that with your continued support and energy, and your prayers between now and November 3rd that we're going to lead a great American comeback. We're going to have a great victory for the American people and for America herself. We're going to make Pennsylvania and America stronger and more prosperous than ever before. And I just know when we reelect Congressman Keller to the House of Representatives. When we send Lisa Scheller and Jim Bognett to a new Republican majority in the House of Representatives. When we reelect principled Republican leaders at every level all across this country. And when we reelect President Donald Trump for four more years. We will make America great again, again. Thank you all very much. God bless Pennsylvania and God bless America.